Good to be back here with you, Rick. Good to be back once again. Uh, we'll have a little discussion on uh, some things involving the, involving around the sport of ultra cycling, ultra racing, and uh, some of these have been pretty fun. This one maybe not so fun, but certainly informative. We hope we'll start out fun. You were asking about my Christmas shirt which was one of my favorite presents this year. It's actually really light material. You can ride in this shirt. It works as a nice, you know, I wear it to the clinic a lot. You can run in it. It's uh, just a super comfortable piece of functional clothing. Which is good because super functional and comfortable will kind of have to do with some of the stuff I, yeah. we are actually <laughs> going to talk about today. So we're going to kind of run through uh, issues you're going to face on the road um, during these longer style races. Um, of course, the distance will have an impact on a lot of these, but most of these issues are not really things you would see on a daily bike ride, um, but you will definitely experience on 500 plus mile races, 24 hour races, and uh, we'll just kind of run through them. And again, we might offer some solutions or ideas around them. But more than anything, it's to make you aware of them and to let people think about, oh, if this happens, we should be prepared for that. Yep. So uh, what, what fun topic would you like to dive into first with issues on the road? You know, let's start with weather. Good, because that's a pretty easy one. I mean, it's tailwinds and beautiful Sunny Blue weather, skies, tailwinds, 75, 75 degrees, degrees every yeah. single ride. And that's how we love rolling. And oh my God, how we wish that was true. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so weather's always a tricky one. So you have to prepare, especially for an event like Ram. But I would say for any race that's 24 hours plus. Oh, absolutely. Racers absolutely need to be prepared for just about everything because even in events like the world time trial races out in Borrego Springs that we do, we've had rain in the desert, which is super rare. But if you're not prepared for that, one, you're wet, you don't have anything to change into, and makes you cold. Oh, you had temperatures in the upper 30s last year. It was cold out there. Yeah, so... And you're in Borrego Springs, where it's, you know, the year before, it was temperate. Gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. So again, like these longer events, you really have, the racers have to be really prepared. I mean, crew, absolutely, you need to have some thing to deal with that, but generally you're probably able to sit in the car, warm up, stay dry, whatever. But for racers where you don't have an option to go run and hide, um, you really need to be prepared for heat, humidity, rain, snow, wind, and, um, you name it. So, and that includes clothing, you know, of course, but even like make sure your equipment is prepared for it, uh, make sunblock, uh, whatever you might need for these things to, to protect yourself because ultimately it could happen. And crew has really got to be on top of weather issues. I mean, for me, I'd much rather have colder weather because I think it's a lot easier to, uh, you know, put on clothes and warmer gloves and but like I can't be shifting. And when my hands get frozen, I can't shift. Right. I just can't do it. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I, I prefer colder weather. I'm not a big fan of the heat, but obviously you race an event like or, or race around or, or just cross Oregon for mm -hmm. sure. It gets hot. Ram, you can get it all. You, you could have everything from scorching heat to snowy, sleety rain on Wolf Creek Pass to downpour rain to wind. So, you know, you kind of have to be prepared for these things. Again, most people don't go out and ride in all these conditions, certainly by choice. But when you're doing an event like anything, 24 hours plus, you might get stuck in a rainstorm. So options to change clothes, you know, because as we'll get to a little bit later on in this discussion, being wet leads to other issues oh, yeah. and not and not fun ones um and being wet doesn't just come from the weather you know if it's hot and you're dumping water on your head or putting ice in your helmet and it's melting down into your shorts you're gonna have some problems yeah and you'll also find it um 
not just in your nether regions, but your hands and feet as well. There's a really tremendous picture of Christoph Strasser's hands um, during one of his ram races. And they, he looked like he had, hand, had his hands in buckets of water for about six hours. They looked terrible. So again, you know, weather, be prepared for it. Know it's coming. And if you're super lucky, you really do get to ride in beautiful weather all the way across your race. And, and I, I've been that lucky, not often. <laughs> Um, not often does it happen. I mean, weather had such an impact on Ram and Raw, what, two years ago, 2021. Yeah. I, how much of the field finished? Yeah, I mean, just scorching heat. It was, was brutal. So hot. So hot. And, and, and what was crazy is... It didn't cool off at night. Yeah. That was the killer. The, the west was brutal. And even in places like Durango, which is relatively mild because it's high, it's in the mountains was pushing 90 degrees. Well, they keep warning all the way. Yep. And of course, on the back end of that course, it was relatively mild. Right. Like it was not super hot in, you know, Annapolis where we were waiting for everybody. Like it was, it was nice. pretty tolerable. It wasn't <laughs> super humid. But for that exact reason, you know, especially during Ram, you're going to have something along the way. And if nothing else, you're going to go from very dry to very humid conditions across the country. Even if it is warm and nice and sunny the whole way, you will have that shift. But even even shorter events, like I know Andrew Willis faced it down in Texas in his thousand mile loop. He had a year that was started out, the weather was okay and turned into a pouring, miserable, cold rainstorm. Yeah, 40 something degrees and pouring rain. Yeah, so you just don't know. I mean, the weathermen are great, but they're only so great. And we all make jokes about it. So when you're looking at any, any event, I'd say 24 hours plus, be prepared for everything. And Lightning. don't cut corners. <laughs> Tornadoes. And, yes. And, I mean, those hit. Yep. And just don't cut corners on it. Um, really important stuff because as soon as you think you're not going to get it, you probably are. And uh, Last thing I want to touch on with weather is fires. Yeah. I mean, you got to be ready for a, a course change. Yep, you do. Fires in the West are, are Happen a lot. very much a reality. We dealt with them in the 508 last year. We've dealt with them with RAM almost every year uh, for the past several years. There's Sometimes it's affected us, sometimes not. But one critical thing about that, kind of as an aside, and it goes along with wind and dust as well, you know, have a face covering. Be prepared for, you know, you know protecting your intake. I mean, COVID may have sucked, but it did force us to wear masks and face coverings. And that's really beneficial when you're dealing with, you know, smoky conditions or blowing sandy, dusty conditions. They're very nice to have that. Um, and again, protecting your skin just overall. That's like fires in the West and flooding in the East. Yep. And, and Mississippi River is, yep. you know, I'd say almost on an every other year basis, it's can, we have issues out in that part of the country during Ram. Um, and you, and you've had issues with hurricanes at Natchez. Oh yeah. So, um, not the hurricane itself dropping into Natchez, but certainly a lot of rainfall. Yeah. You had to shut it down. Yeah. I mean, it was, Cat one hurricane was blowing in and it was for safety. It was like, nope, we're stopping here. Yep. So certainly, no matter where you are in the country, check it out. Understand what weather might be there, um, what's happening as you lead up to the race. But ultimately, get ready for everything because it could happen over that time frame. Um, kind of in the process of getting ready for everything, and we've touched on this a little bit in a previous uh, video about hydration, nutrition. Um, don't go into these races not having tested your food and water. Um, understand the issues with it. Um, you know, hydration's a big one, you know, of course. And a lot of that's affected by the weather. Yeah. Because when it gets cold, it's hard to eat and drink on your bike. Yep. You're not, a, and you're losing calories just, you know, as much as you would be otherwise, but it's really hard to drink a cold bottle of water yeah, or a cold bottle of, bottle of whatever it is when it's 40 degrees and you're freezing. Yeah, and you have to be, whether you have a sport crew or you're on your own, you have to be really attentive to these things. And, and you know, the emphasis is always on hydration, 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 because most of the time, 
racers aren't consuming enough liquids, but there is the alternative where you're consuming too much just pure water, liquid, and you have hyponatremia, which presents a totally different problem. Um, your body shuts down because it's not getting salts and firing all the proper things. They just have too much fluid. Um, so again, you know, be very attentive to these things. You don't need to be a nutritional pro, but you should understand the basics. And you also should probably work with someone who is a pro nutritionist that can guide you and teach you some of the basics. And food's another one, you know, this one, you know, racers tend to be really crafty people about not eating and hiding food and I'm not hungry now. So you, again, you have to be really attentive to making sure. And that sandwich going to go yeah, right, in my right down on the road, you know. <laughs> so you need to, crews need to be really attentive to that. Racers, you need to be attentive to it. You need to understand once you get in deficits of these things, Food in particular, at least at least hydration, you can always go get an IV and bounce back a little bit. But food, when you start getting in calorie deficits, big ones, they're really hard to come back from. So, and they're, those are, you know, these types of things you would think, having ridden your bike a lot and prepared a lot and hopefully done some events, that you would know all these things. But we see so many times racers and crews come out to our events that just don't get the nutrition thing. Or, well, I read this guy's nutrition plan, so I'm going to use it. <clears throat> Not always a good plan. So if you're going into your A race, have some nutrition dialed in. If you're using the race as kind of a testing ground, that's okay. But again, have alternatives. And go back and watch our previous video about it because we dive into it a little deeper. I do want to touch on, you mentioned in an earlier video, uh, the nutrition and hydration log, everything yes. that goes in. And if your rider's really slowing down, odds are they either haven't been sleeping well or they are down on calories. Yeah, something's off. Something yep. is off. And it's usually not purely like, hey, he's not fit enough or she's not fit enough. Most of these racers are pretty fit when they show up to, to events. You know, where where you really notice the slowdown is, yeah, food, water, drink, sleep, you know, that type of thing. So crews, you need to be super attentive and don't let your racer get in big deficits. And again, also, you know, referring to our video about it, make sure you take care of yourselves too. You need to eat and take care of yourself as a crew member as well. You know, don't ignore uh, eating and drinking because it affects you. Um, so yeah, they, that that's a big one. That's a big one you see more often than you would think you would see. Yep. Uh, how about medical issues? So the least fun <laughs> of all topics, of, or, or the most fun, depending on what you think about it, you know, the, our sport provides a very unique platform for very unusual ailments. Uh, most of them not debilitating, but they certainly they don't feel good. Each other. <laughs> yeah, and they don't feel good, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I suppose we can dive right into the probably the most painful but fixable is saddle sores. So again, when you're we're talking about getting wet, dumping water on your head, rain, you know, your butt gets soft and you're rubbing it, you know, just a little tiny bit. And the chafing or ingrown hairs cause blisters or burns. And it's a really, really miserable, crappy feeling. Yeah, the nether regions take a real beating. Yeah, and, and there are ways to work with it and cure it. But really, you know, in which I'll, I'll talk about how we deal with it um, for my dad's solo ram. But really, the best way is get ahead of the curve. You know, stay dry, take care of it. Change, change clothes a lot. Change chamois patterns. Um, you know, just don't let it even start. Now, for solo ram racers, yeah, you're likely going to get them anyway, but there are ways to kind of deal. Like, we dealt with ours by keeping my dad, when he got off the bike, really clean, used really pure aloe gel on him while he slept. And when he got up, cleaned him again. Um, sprayed dermaplast, just a clear band-aid on them. Not don't, like 
like don't use a band-aid that'll bunch up and create other friction. Um, and then a boatload of chamois cream. And don't get the kind that has any menthol in it. It may feel good on a normal day, but not on a day when you got saddle burns. burns like crazy. So yeah, just, <laughs> just stay clean and dry and, and you can treat them over time. You know, I gotta say, new sponsor for Ram, Infinity Bike Seat. Yeah, that a very good mm-hmm. option, right? Maybe not the saddle for everybody, but if you're gonna be sitting on your bike a long time, these saddles, a lot of ultra racers have gone to the, this direction and seem to love them. Uh, yep. I know you're riding one right now. Got on both my bikes and I really, really like it. Yep, so again, great, get ahead of the curve, right? So that's a good way to check it out, but don't show up to the start line having never, never ridden it. Right. <laughs> uh, it's slightly different. And, yeah. You know, I mean, having a different saddle to change to um, you know, if you don't have an infinity on your bike to start and you're getting saddle sores, it might be a really nice saddle to put on sure. halfway across. I mean, just something to think about. Yeah, just, I always brought extra saddles that were a different shape just because if I was having a lot of trouble with one, yeah, I might as well try it. But you better have everything measured out on your bike. I mean, yeah, Just about to go that way because <laughs> anytime you change what's happening in your shorts area, you know, you need to make those adjustments to your saddle height, whether you're, you know, um, putting on two pairs of shorts, another great kind of short term solution kind of helps um, gel saddles, the ones we all make fun of, of people riding their little cruiser bikes around town. They feel like heaven on earth when you have saddle sores. So, but they're going to be, you know, quarter to half inch mm-hmm. thick. So you have to adjust that saddle height. Otherwise, you're going to kind of run into some of these other issues we're about to address. But get ahead of it. You know, deal with it. Don't let it be the end of your race. It really doesn't need to be. Right. It can be, but don't let it get that bad. Um, some of the maybe more uh, common injury, if they're kind of ailments. They're not really injuries, like hand and foot injuries. Numb, numb, numb. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So... You get numbness, you get blisters, um, hot, foot. hot foot, you know, so it's always good, at, especially an event like Ram or some of these longer events, maybe have a shoe that's as much as a size bigger, yep. um, just for dealing with heat and swelling. Um, you don't want to take one of your really nice pairs of shoes that fit perfectly and cut them apart, which we've seen people do. I bring, um, I do have a really old pair of shoes that I bring on every Ram that has the toes cut out. Yeah, I only had to use them once, but I'm sure glad I had them when I did. Yeah, because they are they are issues like they're uncomfortable, right? Again, it, it shouldn't mm-hmm. mean the end of your race by yeah. any means, but and be sure to like move around on the bike. You know, take pressure off your hands a little bit. Arrow bars are sweet. You don't need to go full Levi Leipheimer praying mantis position. You just need to be able to rest your arms, really. You'll probably get sores here. Yep, yep. <laughs> but yeah, and all, and all these things happen over longer races. You know, maybe a 500-mile race, you may or may not have some of these. Um, but one thing, again, a lot of these issues, if you get ahead of it, you will have less of it. So invest in a really good bike fit. Get a really good bike fit by somebody who knows and understands what you're doing. You know, you 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 know, if you're, especially if you're a solo racer and you're going to be in like a time trial position, um, you don't want a super aggressive position. You need to be relaxed, or you won't have a neck. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing the stacks you see under the arrow bars themselves, I, as well as the handlebars, yeah. to really bring people up. And you're not especially arrow, but you still you know, get most of the benefit. You get you still get a lot of it you get about 80, 85% of the benefit, even if you're sitting, like I use, I think they're four inch, three or four inch risers on mine. And all I want to be able to do, like I want the arrow benefit, which I get most of, I just want to be able to relax, you know, take some of the weight off my arms and shoulders and, you know, it feels good um, just to take a break. And the bike fit, you really have to, most bike fitters, are dealing with more traditional racers or triathletes. So you've got to explain to them what you're doing. Uh, Because that, you know, a super aggressive position, 
um, or a bad fit can lead to a couple other things. IT band problems, super common. Hip knee, you know, issues. Again, you don't need to get those. With a good bike fit, maybe, you know, some type of chiropractor or massage therapist will work on you a little bit, keep, you know, your neck and shoulders loose, your arms and legs loose, you know, but good fits will take a lot of the IT band issues away, you know. Um, and get a fit with your aero bars. Don't be yeah, foolish like I was. I hated riding with aero bars. Hated it. Yeah. And flipped them on before Ram 95 and <laughs> paid the price. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean. But you got to get used to being on the bars. Yeah, you do. And, and, and the great, it, and again, you know, if you're not, don't traditionally ride them all the time, um, you know, they're a little weird to mm -hmm. get used to, but once you get used to them, like I love it's mine, I prefer to just sit in them, even if I'm just like resting my elbows on them and not using them for aerodynamic purposes. That's what I usually just do on my handlebars. Yeah, yeah just rest That's your hands, relax. It's not going to be the same. No. In a race, having the clip-ons is, is a whole lot better. Yeah, and, and again, one of the, so all of these things, bike fits and positioning and arrow, not arrow, um, you know, one of the ailments that is really specific to RAM is Sherman Rack. And it's a funky one. <laughs> uh, we don't see it a ton fully, but there's always, almost every, Probably about 30% of the people to finish have the starting of it. About oh, yeah. you know, 5 or 10% might actually get it. Um, if you've had a really bad head neck injury, you're probably going to get it. Yep. You're tall and thin. Like someone like you are, are far more in that category than someone like me who's a little shorter and stockier. Uh, but your muscles in your neck basically give out. And you can't support your head. And it's the scalenes, the ones yep. in front yep. that fry, and then these end up doing all the work. And when they give out, you can't hold your head up. Yeah. So again, you know, be careful with your bike fit, how you arrow you are. Um, good to have, you know, even if you aren't lucky enough to have a chiropractor or massage therapist, just have one of your crew like massage, you know, your neck and kind of keep it loose and move your head around. I mean, your everybody's head is. It's a pretty heavy hunk of stone up there, you know. It's ten pounds. And, you know, these little tiny muscles are not designed to hold it in a weird position. And a couple of tricks from experience for a Shermer neck to avoid it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought we were getting it. No. <laughs> I'm thin, you know, here. Yeah. So I always wear a cycling cap under my helmet, and I really like the brim because it cuts down on sun, even wearing glasses. But with that brim there, it also cuts into your ability to just raise your eyes and look ahead. And so I tend to turn my head up a little bit more than I normally would. And I started yep. riding with my brim up and I don't care if it looks silly, it allows me to relax my neck. The other thing is glasses such as you are wearing yep. that have the full frame over the top. When you're on your arrow bars and you're trying to look ahead and you're raising your eyes, a lot of times they raise right into the frame. Yep. And it blocks your vision. So I highly recommend wearing glasses that are, you know, you've got the earpieces, but it's just the lens. Yeah. It yeah. It's a huge difference. It, it does. And again, you're looking for things to not stress these muscles. Yep. Um, you know, and it, and it, you know, and people always ask, can, can you do exercises or train them and get stronger? Sort of, but not really. I mean, they're really small muscles. They're not, you know, it's not like going to the gym and working your legs or your lats, which are pretty big and you can get I, big and strong. John Hughes rode with fishing weights on his helmet. I tried that and I, it, I was never out long enough to feel like that really did much. And I lost my neck on the Ando Man. Uh, solo. Yeah, I mean, I think ultimately you might be able to get them a little stronger. I mean, mm -hmm. exercising anything, you will get stronger. But I think if you have the disposition to get it anyway, I'm not sure it's going to help. So you kind of have to take it for what it is. Be prepared for it. Again, it doesn't need to be the end of your race. It's really uncomfortable. But we've seen a lot of racers ride right through it and not 
I mean, even bat and eyelash, like Peter Euler's done it. I know Jim Reeves has had it. Um, there's been quite a few. And, and Wolfgang Thoshing actually had it. Jock Boyer had it and still won in 2006. Right. Um, right. Comotion made me the coolest custom neck support. It came up, I, I had lost my neck twice and was riding on potato chip cans and water bottles. And I mean, I needed that chin rest and it really affected uh, all the weight that was on the front tire. So it made the bike really hard to handle. And Comotion made this thing that mounted on the top tube right near the front. And then it was a bar that came up and they ran a shock absorber and a flexible hinge and a raisable chin cup. And that thing was amazing. We put a, a the type of foam that you use in a, a water vest, you yeah. know, a, a, whatever you call those, personal flotation device. And it was so great on the chin. The hardest thing I had uh, in 2002 Ram was it was so comfortable. It was easy to fall asleep. To go to sleep. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, and again, like, you know, be prepared for it. You know, you may or may not get it. If you do have a neck injury or if you are taller and thinner, you know, it might spend a little time there. You can do the research. There's lots of crazy solutions for them. Um, some of them look terrible and miserable. And some are not too bad, like just standard little C collars just to give mm -hmm. a little support, you know, um, anything from like crazy PVC contraptions. But again, try to try to head it off early, um, stay loose, keep your neck rolling, moving, adjust your head position now every now and then and, and be prepared for it. Um, I guess kind of the last big, big thing you really experience on RAM is kind of digestive issues. Um, that's a that's a big one, and it happens to I'd say almost every racer, um, solo or team. Uh, you run into this, um, goes back to hydration and nutrition, and mm -hmm. you know understand your body, you're stressing your body to do weird things. Um, quite often, change what you're eating and drinking. Um, yeah. Slow down a little bit. You, you know, I we found that you know John Hughes, one of the things he recommended was you know we were my dad was bloating a little bit on a training ride he said well you don't want to stop because there's no reason to stop you don't feel terrible you just can't intake so just sip water instead of drink it and just slow down a little bit and ease your pace and just, but moving forward at some pace is better than being stopped you know if you're a team racer you can have the luxury of sticking your teammate out there to take your place but you know, again, but you still want to get it fixed because yeah. <laughs> you got to get back out. Yep, yep. And that, and going back to that, like you know, understand your food, have options. You know, just don't mm -hmm. say, "Well, this is what I'm eating, and this is all I'm eating." Probably not a good idea because at some point during a long event, you're not going to want it, and you're not going to feel good. You know, and, and again, the longer the event, the more these issues pop up. I remember Alan Larson, like '03, I think, when he won. Yeah. Um, I remember his crew saying he was really sick of his shake that they were making and they were using fresh fruit with a, you know, a, a hammer, whatever type of protein mix. And, uh, but they said, you know, this is your food. This is what you're going to eat. You can celebrate with food when we get to the finish. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> That's painful. I mean, I, you know, they're, they're racers who do that though. They just suck it up and that's what they want yeah I, yeah i mean i i know i know christoph at the end of uh ram does not love um his ensure shakes but he takes them as long as he has to to get to where he's going um but a lot of the medical issues that, that you pop up you know i think i mean of course there's you might get road rash if you wreck or something but these are these ones are kind of unique to the ultra world. Anything else would be kind of normal bicycle issues. Um, and, you know, you can head a lot of these off and, and deal with a lot or even prevent them. And, and if you have the opportunity to have massage therapists, have a chiropractor, or have a doctor or nurse on your crew, it's a huge bonus. And EMT. EMT, right. Any, any medical profession that understands or has worked in it is really beneficial. They're not mandatory, they're not necessary, but huge pluses. And, and there are keys to get like 
chiropractors, doctors, nurses, EMTs, they're all pretty specialized and they're not the easiest to track down to get to come out to a race and crew for you unless you just know them. But massage therapists, and maybe even even some young younger EMTs or people new in the business, if you go to like a massage school and post on a message board that you're looking for a massage therapist, quite often you'll get people that want to or have to come out and get hours in. And so And they can't accept pain. Right. Yeah. And so it's a really good way for them to get something out of it. They're experiencing something. They're getting their time in and you get the benefit from it as well. But so maybe your crew does too. Yeah. But also make sure they fit with your crew. Ultimately. Yep. You, know, you don't want just some random person because but there are resources to find these people and they will make your life amazingly easy um, should you experience bad things on the road things that are really awful um, always go to urgent cares first before a hospital um, you're likely to get seen quicker more affordable etc we hope nobody has those experiences at any event but just know urgent cares are always a better option than an emergency room unless it is truly an emergency and I think I think you'd agree with me on all all these things is most of them shouldn't mean the end of your race correct you know they really should not and if you do and if it's not something that's going to hurt you seriously or long term you know try to try to suffer through it and find your way through it because you'll find that it will get better or you know shortly after you're done it will probably go away right. but the hurt from stopping quitting won't go away. Yeah, and, and so you have to be smart. You know, don't damage yourself permanently, but don't let a little nagging ache take you out of a race, you know? Most racers, again, solos or teams, and, and most of these longer ultra races, you're gonna be uncomfortable and, okay. and a little bit miserable, And but, you know, it's not worth quitting over. If it is a serious injury, absolutely. Don't hurt yourself because they are just bike races. They are and should be fun. And at what point should you call race headquarters? I I just have a rule at mine. If you're down with some type of issue for more than 30 minutes, I just want to know. I, I think it's a good thing to let either a race official, headquarters, somebody involved with the race management if you're going to be down for 30 minutes to an hour plus, or if it's something you're worried about, let them know because they might be able to help, but they're also not wondering what's happening. Yep. Um, because it, 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 you don't want to leave everyone in the dark. It, it won't help you over the long term. And it's just kind of courteous to let the, the race directors, management know what's happening because they do care. Every one of us cares about what's happening on the road. And we do worry about every racer on the road or crew member. You know, we don't want anyone hurt or you know seriously hurt over time. And if we can help or just have that knowledge, it puts everybody's mind at ease. Um, you know, one other medical issue that is kind of hard to address, but you can't sleep. You're yeah. exhausted and you get off the bike and you just can't go to sleep. Yeah. Those, those are tricky and they're... You know, I think it, I think in races like Ram and Raw, the longer races, like when you're tired, you're tired and you're you're, you're out. done. <laughs> you're, you're out. But there are times where you still it's just and a lot of times it's what we talked about in an earlier show. You had some caffeine or something. Maybe you ate some chocolate. Yep. Uh, you had a little something that is just going to disrupt your ability to get to sleep quick. Yeah, and that truly is a. A strange problem to have because you're exhausted but you're not sleepy tired you mm -hmm. know and you we saw it in the video with Marco Ballo coming over Wolf Creek Pass he was supposed to go down for a sleep they brought him in got him off his bike put him in the RV supposed to sleep and like 30 seconds later he's back up he says I can't sleep let's go ride and and that's okay you know to some extent but you also don't want any serious issue to happen of that so even if a racer can't sleep maybe it's good just to get them off the bike for 15 sure. minutes 30 minutes and just lay them down and just 
put them in bed <laughs> and start work, do a massage, work on their feet, yeah. hands, whatever. And that could help them go to sleep. Yeah. But it, yeah. Don't let little, any of these little things become like big issues down the road and tackle them early and, and address it. And also it's good to have a plan. Like, you know, we talk about coming into RAM, we do in our seminars about before you even show up, you should have a plan of what's going on. And, Every one of these issues, weather, nutrition, medical, all these things, sleep, you should have a plan, not for the, just the racers, but the crew to deal with them. Now, all sorts of things happen that you may not expect, but if you're thinking ahead a little bit, you can deal with these things. And it kind of gets into the last little part of this, and it's problem solving, right? So, you know, you're going to have, you know, these are all kind of, you know, bodily issues, but of course you're going to have bike mechanical issues, car issues, you know, flat tires, busted chains, bad shifting, you know, you have to be able to solve these problems on the road. Um, so think, think ahead, have a, have an idea of what you want to do. Like, you know, I know you and I are racing and you're a DI2, uh, battery i think crapped out or unplugged no, it unplugged well, right and for some reason I, it just took a while to on a climb yeah of course <laughs> because why not <laughs> but yeah it took a while to figure out well why isn't my di2 working and now i don't use electronic when i'm doing a race like that i just don't want something like that to go wrong yeah and, and again so we'll just take that example because it presented itself if you're going out to do a race uh, and you have a crew and you want to use things like electronic shifting or disc brakes is another big one. The technology is awesome behind these things. They save your hands and yeah. you know, they're awesome, right? But if you don't have someone on the crew that can work on these things, they can become a nightmare. So you always have to think about ahead about solving the problems that might pop up. You won't be able to get them all because some weird thing is going to happen. But if you kind of look at the issues you might have down the road, whether they be physical or weather or mechanical, like I said, cars, bikes, whatever, you ought to have kind of a thought, a plan, be prepared for it, think ahead, be, you know, have crew members in particular who are good at solving problems. It's nice to have a spare bike that you like as much as your primary bike. Yeah. Train on your spare bike because it really is awful to have your primary bike have some type of mechanical you get on your spare bike and you just don't feel right yeah and and, and silly little things too like when we talk about problem solving and being prepared don't show up to a race on a t on tires that have a lot of miles on them yeah. take them off put brand new tires on that way you're starting fresh they should be good no matter what the distance of race you're on you know, silly things like that. We've heard of racers get but like, get at least a good ride or two on the new tires. Sure, yeah, get a, get them. You know, get fifty miles on them, whatever, hundred miles on them, but don't show up with tires that have a thousand miles on them. <laughs> like, and we've we've seen racers at Ram that I had twenty flats. Where I'm like, what are you riding? What are you doing? You know, we had two flats in Ram with my dad, two, and one of them happened eight miles from the finish line, coming into Atlantic City. Is that when he crashed? No, that was no, no, that was totally different. <laughs> so again, you know, think ahead, be prepared. These issues that happen on the road, most of them can be dealt with. You know, and, and even if there's something that are really challenging to deal with, let's say you break a collarbone. Well, have a you know, think about it, have a plan to what you're gonna do with that. Make sure that you know what's gonna happen when that goes down. It doesn't happen tremendously often, but it does happen. Um, problem solving, crew dysfunction, people that you've had on all these meetings that you've been doing, maybe had a little question about George or you know whomever on the crew, yeah. and George lives up to that bad expectation that you had when you're in, you know, Kansas. What do you do? Yeah, have, have, you got to have a plan for it. You because a crew member can be very poisonous. Um, even even a racer on a bigger team, like if you have an eight person team, a racer with a bad attitude can really ruin that experience. And, and you need to know how to deal with those things. And, and there are, all 
these things are realities. They are things that pop up. For most teams, you'll experience most of the minor stuff. You won't have super major things go wrong. And, and you know, and the shorter the race, the less likely you'll have a lot of these problems, um, except for nutrition and weather. Um, but the longer the race, when you get up to ram distance race, every one of these things is in play. And again, you may be really lucky, never have any of them. But if you have a bad crew member, what do you do with them? You know, um, and I'm not going to answer that question for you because there's lots of solutions. All and sorts of things. Maybe it's your brother and you can't kick him out of the vehicle. You know? Your significant so, other. <laughs> your significant other, right. Or, But... It doesn't matter what the things are. The, the whole issue of problem solving is creativity because wherever you are on the road, your resources are not like they're at, are at home. You know, you can't just run down the street to Home Depot and get some stuff and fix it. So you got to think about it, plan, plan ahead for it, be a little strategic. And most things that are big issues can remain really small issues and never become a problem. Yeah, I'm thinking again, just with crew, you've got that person who won't sleep. Yep. they got to get separated. It's, it's yeah, that, that, that can be a tough one. Yeah, they're very, but, they're very yeah. challenging. And, um, and everybody's sleep deprived. So if you don't have that plan or you haven't thought about any of this stuff going into it, it's just hitting you out of the blue. So hopefully this is generating some discussion points for crews and racers and, um, you'll go into your events with a, a good plan. Yeah, I mean, and that, that's ultimately what, you know, what you want. You want to go in as best prepared as you can, race any distance you're racing, and then hopefully some of these discussions, not just in this video, but the other ones, have made you think because we can't answer all the questions. In our seminars, we can't answer all the questions, but we want you to think about every one of these things that could pop up. And when you do that, you end up with a pretty dang good race. Yep. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks, everybody. And we'll uh, see you next time. All right.